if we today also take on the word and the word will become flesh in us, we, like Jesus, continue to play the role Jesus played. We also manifest God in human flesh. I don't know if, you, if that is too complicated for you. God, the word was with God. Chapter 1. That same chapter. Chapter verse 1. Verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was, was God. God. So the word was God. So what happened to that word, which was God, in verse 14? Really? And the word was made flesh. So the word, which is God, became, was made flesh. Now, in whose body was it made flesh? Whose flesh is that? Tell me somebody. Jesus. Somebody, Jesus' is flesh. That is in verse 14. So the word, which is God, became flesh, which we call, the first word that became flesh, we call it Jesus. Right? Became Jesus. Now, after Jesus left, what do you think that is? You think that it's just supposed to be a one-time phenomenon or it's supposed to be a model? I can't hear you. It's supposed to be a model. It's supposed to be a model in the sense that look at it. It is possible. Human flesh and blood can carry the nature of God. Look at it. This is it. Look at the manifestation, the truth of it. This is God in the flesh. Whenever you take the word of God and any flesh can take the pain and the time to imbibe and inculcate that word in the human flesh and if that word will be given the preeminence and if that word will take over the human flesh, that human flesh becomes a partaker of God's nature. That word becomes flesh. And if that word will become flesh, God, that particular aspect of the word that becomes flesh in you, if it is love, if you discover God's word as love, and if that love, the, word, the revelation about love, God's word on love, becomes a revelation to you, and you take on the nature of God's love, that love, you become, you become a manifestation of God's love. If you discover God as a kind God and becomes a revelation in your flesh and you put on that kindness in your flesh, you become the manifestation of God's nature of kindness. You become God's kindness on the earth. You become God's love. If the word that you got a hold of is the word forgiveness, you got the nature of God as a forgiving God and you discover that as a revelation in you, and you put the word in you, you made the word to become part of your soul, part of your body, that God is a forgiving God. I'm going to be forgiven. So that word becomes your nature as well. So that nature of God, which is forgiveness, forgiving God, takes a hold of you. And you also begin to, you begin to manifest forgiveness as God manifests. I don't know if you are getting it. If any time the word becomes flesh in you, you take on the divine nature. You become like him. You become forgiving like him. You become kind like him. You become loving like him. If that word love, is love becomes a revelation to you, becomes your flesh. If, it, if that word of God, which is God himself, in the aspect of the word, you know, God is big. There is no way we could ever get the whole book God in us. But the word, the particular word, if it's in the, in the person of Jesus, the totality of God's word, became flesh in him. But in us, it is just bit by bit. It's a, it's a part of God's word that becomes a revelation to us that takes on our nature and where we take on God's nature. You understand that? So, let me give you another, yeah, but the desire to do it is not just because you know it. Now, take, taking the nature, when I say the word becomes flesh, it's a process. The word that becomes flesh is not just that you know it or in your mind. Or you know it of head. You know, if you know a word of head, that doesn't mean it has become your nature. You know, for the word to become your nature, that's what I said yesterday, that I was spending like two weeks just to make the word break me, to make the word remold me, 
to make the word my nature. So you have to go through that process of breakage before the word can really take a, take a hold of you and become your nature. So when it becomes, it becomes part of you, you just know it. It's a process, you just know it. It's not just in your head. You just begin to behave like that. You cannot behave otherwise again. You, you just become loving. You become forgiving. And so when the world becomes a part of you, the nature of God takes a hold of you in that particular aspect of the world. Let me give you another confirmation to that. To that. John chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. John chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. Jesus answered them. Oh, that's too loud, I think. Jesus answered them. It is not written in your law. I said you are gods. Is it not written in your law? Yeah? I if he called them God. gods. Now, listen closely. God, God is saying here, Jesus is explaining that statement. He's saying, is it not written in your law that I say, I, no, did you say, mm -hmm. I say you are gods. Now, let's find out. Why is God calling people God? When, at what stage of life do, do human beings like us become part of God's nature that we are called God? He's going to explain it in 34 and 35. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said ye are gods? If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came. Stop! Yeah. Did you see that? Unto whom the word of God came. So if the word of God comes to you and becomes your nature, the word becomes flesh in you. In that aspect of the word that has become flesh in you, the nature of God becomes yours. That's where God calls you God. The kindness of God gets a hold of you. The word of God has come to you. The word of God has become flesh in you. That's where you become, you carry the nature of God. You become a partaker of divine nature. That's why I call them God. I call you God unto whom the word of God has come to dwell in. Unto whom the word of God has come to take possession of. Unto whom the word of God has come to have preeminence. Unto whom the word of God has come to be flesh. I call them God. I don't know if you understand that. So in that aspect, let's say it is the word of God on love that has come to me and has taken hold of me. That word has become flesh, love, the love of God. Like right now, in me, it is true. I don't know what it means not to like anybody. I don't know what it means to dislike. There is nobody in the world that I don't like, that I don't love. Because of the nature, I, that word has come to me. There is just no, nothing you could do against me that will make me to, dis, to dislike you. The nature of God's love has been revealed to me. Basic. You cannot make me hate you. That word has come to me. That word has become flesh in me. In that area, I am God over that situation. For example, if the word of God, the healing nature of God, God says, I am Jehovah Rapha, the God that healed you. If that revelation comes to you, that God is the healer, you know, like it came to Oral Roberts or it came to, you know, those, you know Smith Wigglesworth, and God is the healing God, or to Catherine Kuhlman or Benny Hinn, God is a healer. You know, it is just, their, it becomes their nature. It just takes over them. So that aspect of the world has become flesh in them. So they become God, like God unto that Pharaoh. They become God over that situation. So for me, I became a God over hatred. There's no way I can hate. So I became like God over uh, Pharaoh. Because the word of God came to Moses, that you are God over. So he became a God over that situation, over Pharaoh. Because the word of God came unto him and made him God. So the word of God uh, could come to you like the kindness of God, the nature of God. So there's no way you cannot be kind because you have become a God over that situation. So he said, I call them gods unto whom the word of God come. Unto whom, if the word of God has come to you, it means it has taken hold of your nature. Unto whom the word of God come, they become gods. Over in that area, in that aspect, because the word has become flesh in them. So they become God's manifestation in that area, particular area. So we cannot all become perfect in all areas because, but in some area where the word of God has come to you, you become the manifest. So that's what he's saying, yes. So that's what he was saying that 
Uh, nobody has seen God before. But unto whom the word of God came, Jesus, the word that became flesh, he revealed God. He manifested God. That's how we are called to be revealing God. Because that's why I read the Bible every day. I read the Bible so that the word of God can come to me. So that more, another aspect of the word of God will come to me and transform my evil nature, carnal nature, weak, weak nature, into his nature. I want more of God's aspect to be manifested in me. More of God's nature. More of his word to come unto me so that I could become God over my situations, over my carnal no, nature, over my flesh, over my, no, my world, over the real situation in life. I want the, the word of God to become flesh in me. Then I could reveal God in that dimension, in that aspect of the world that has become flesh. Mm. So now, see those three scriptures together. John 1, 17 and 18. Nobody has seen God, but we could see God in the people whose word, in whose God's word has become flesh. That's John 1, 14. When the word of God comes to them, they become like a God. You see God in them. They become like God over their situation. In that aspect of their life, you see God. Oi, I've tried my best. I don't know if you got it. I, how many, how many you really think they got it? Yeah. How many think they got it? If you got it, I want you to say it in your own words. How many got it? I want you to say it in your own words. Who, who said I got it? The lady said I got it. Elena. Sorry? When you claim God over, over uh, all your situation, means you cannot hate? If it is, if it is about love, yes, yes, you cannot hate. Yes. If that word comes to you. But how do you explain that? What we just explained today? You just said when you have God in you, you come over. No, not when you have God in you. Everybody have God in them. Pastor Sunday, the way I, I wrote it here, it says that whenever a revelation comes to you, and you attain mastery over that thing in your life. If, if, that revela if you allow that word of revelation, mm -hmm. that word of God to take over yes. your flesh, to take mastery over your flesh. And you that master breakage, that thing. That is breakage. If it's forgiveness, if it's yeah. hatred. If, you, if, the, if it's not just revelation, mm -hmm. but that revelation, you've got to allow it to penetrate and to correct you. Yes. To change your nature. Yes, you gain mastery over that part over of your flesh. Over that part of your flesh. Yes. Over that part of your old nature. Yes. Then you can manifest that to the world, revealing God, God in that to them area. in that yeah. area. So that is, the, your old nature, that way, is being overcome by the new nature of God. Yes. So he's saying, put on the Christ. That is how you put on the flesh. The word must become flesh. So you are putting on the new man. Yes. That way you are revealing, revealing God instead of the old man. So your old, the, part, the old part of you is being conquered in that aspect. So you ladies, what do you understand? Well, I wrote down here that the word of God spoken or revealed to, to me will become flesh. It'll become my nature. Once that word is revealed to me, what God wants to do for me or in me or through me. It will be revealed to you though and yet not become part of your nature. Yes. So how, how, how many of you can explain to mm -hmm. me that? You could get a revelation and many people have revelation all the time. Mm -hmm. But it never, they never work on themselves for that revelation to become flesh, for the word to become flesh. Can you explain that to me? Yeah. I, I, I have you, to make a conscious effort. No, I understand. I have to make a conscious effort in that area in which I'm struggling with or which what God has revealed to me, make a conscious effort to overcome my flesh in those areas through the word of God. Okay. How do you, right. what, can you explain to us the process of doing that like I did yesterday? The process of yeah, over... Of, of humbling yourself for, to make that word become flesh in you. Mm. You remember what I said yesterday? How I explained it? How do you, what is the process of the, reading the word of God and getting revelation from me? And what is the process between the revelation in the book and in my mind? And it to take over my life. Well, as you said, you meditated upon that word. You Good. ate on it. You Meditation. meditated upon it. You reflected upon Reflection. it. You, you looked at situations that may arise in your life. What would you do in those situations if they were to come Comparison. up? How you would, yeah, 
Um, you let it break you. Yeah, you, you, you put yourself in a situation yeah. where you humbled yourself. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, humble yourself. God's, you don't want God to humble you. You yeah. want to humble yourself. You put yourself in a situation where you yeah. humbled yourself yeah. in a church with a man whom you thought maybe you might have been exceeded in some areas. Yeah. But So you put yourself in a position to humble yourself and sit up under him. So, so it you is put not yourself enough. in. You're right. Very correct. So it is not enough just to get the revelation. Mm -hmm. Yes. For the world to take, for the, for the world, which is the nature of God, to become my nature, to take a hold of my nature, there must be a process yes. of transformation. Yes. Absolutely. So that is how the world becomes flesh. But if it becomes flesh in you, then you are like God in that situation. You want to say something? It's, I mean, I just wrote down that um, I can represent God or call myself God in, in the area that I allow the word of God to become the very nature of God in my life by allowing mm -hmm. it to, to work its work in me so that I can apply the, the word of God and allow it to change me. And when it changes me, then I can represent God to the world in that particular area. Because I can be that in one area, but still be struggling in another you know area. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's uh, you see, And that is the problem sometimes with Christians. So when uh, there is moral failure of a leader or something like that, they don't know that it's not that if somebody fails in one aspect, right. does not mean it's totally bad. Right. You know, yeah, because it's got victory on one aspect of his life, the word of God has changed him in some areas. He has become the nature of God in those areas. But that does not mean, and none of us will really get to a place where we are totally perfect. We'll keep on working on it all our lives, you see. Sometimes we just believe and obey, but then you are exercising constraint and discipline. But when it becomes the nature of God, you don't exercise anything. You walk in it. You understand what we're talking about? You become it. You become it. Yes. Yeah, you just walk in it. So like you people are talking yesterday about me, you see the spirit of father, you see. I don't notice it. I don't even know what you people are saying. <laughs> the only thing I know is the, how I work every day on that nature. That's just the only thing I do to take on myself is nature. So then you people are saying you're seeing it. I just, I just, it's just me now. That's it. So how much God you put in yourself? That's the question. Anybody wants to help us explain it a little bit? Yeah, it's over there. Go for it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, what I find out in my life is that each time I try to do it, most of the time I fail. But when I lean on the grace of the Lord is much easier for me. But that's and, not, and, and, and what that I'm is saying, totally different from what I'm saying. What it, I want you to explain is right. totally different. Is I'm telling you to explain at what, what does it mean that unto whom the word of God come are called gods. I call you gods unto whom the word of God has come. What does that mean? Uh, uh, if I understand it correctly, um, on t your question, unto whom... God of, word of God comes. Comes. Are, they are called gods. They are called gods. Yeah. Uh, I'm on Because you are not here last night. Yeah, last so night. So you will have trouble with Probably, that. So yeah, give I, it to the other perhaps guy. Perhaps maybe that's. Who else? The other guy at the back, yeah. On the road to Emmaus, <clears throat> Jesus was speaking to two men. And uh, the moment they got into the city. The Bible says their eyes became opened. And the men began to say is that did not our heart born inside of us as he spoke to us. You see, that is a, you are very, that is a very great illustration because that is at the point when their eyes opened. So their eyes opened when the word of God came to them, God to them. So they just, it became, they just got it, you know, and they, but before then, it's just like all of us, we're reading it, we know it, but we don't know, we, they saw Jesus with him, with them, 
Jesus was just right there with them. He was eating with them. Still, they didn't know he was the one. Just like all of us. So you could know the word of God. You could exercise discipline, you know, fear of God, just to, to live right. But when the word of God comes to you, you become like a God. <laughs> what a situation. That's very good. Thank you. Yes. Uh, like you, Pastor, said, uh, that's a breaking period while uh, until the world, word of God really comes to you. Because in my life, it the, was... The, you are talking about the, breakage, the breaking period. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're talking about. And it's real. Because um, I used to read lo a lot of books. And after about maybe one year, I, t I really understood what I, I read in that book. Those revelations. Uh, I saw that I got those revelations when I read that book. But after God led me through certain periods of my life, I finally received that word. I finally understand completely. I finally got this word and start, and this word became flesh in me and I start living uh, by so those there is revelations. there a process between the word coming, I mean you receiving the revelation and the word becoming flesh in you. There is a process. For me, I just want to clarify that I understand what you're saying. And I'm going to use Peter, that there was a time that Christ had as his disciple what do men say what, what do people say that I am? And it was, it was Peter himself that said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. So we can say that at that moment in time, Peter did receive a revelation. But it did not become a flesh unto him. Because we saw that in the process of the making of character of God in the life of Peter, there was even a time of falling when he had denied. Yeah, even the very next moment after he confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, he was trying to stop him from going to uh, Jerusalem to the cross, okay. which means he got revelation, but it never really became flesh in him. Unto him. So were, now, it's a different Peter that I see in the book of Acts. That's who right. not only did mighty things, but spoke with authority and that power about that's the same true. Jesus. That is true. In my own life, excellent illustration. In my own life, I could not understand how God could say he's the father of the fatherless and the orphans. And he wanted to manifest the same authority and power in me, even though I was barren. Brilliant. And I was looking for children. Brilliant. But the minute I conceived the word of God, Brilliant. Brilliant. I brought it forth. Brilliant. I was not only able to begin to see all children as alike, in anywhere that I see them, I carry their burden. Brilliant. I begin to carry whatever becomes their problem becomes my problem. My when God. they talk about children or poverty, that's my children. Wow. So I begin to feel it the way the heart of the Father feels it. And that's what I call revelation. Brilliant. Did you see that? Brilliant. I don't know if you all got what she's saying. Brilliant. So now, when you talk about orphanages and orphans, she knows what that means. And she's feeling the feelings of the heart of the Father. Because she got that revelation. So to her right now, there are no... Uh, what is... Not what they call... Shujik they say. No, no, uh, there are no illegitimate children. Yeah. For you now, there are no illegitimate children. All children are legitimate. Right? All children are good children. All children are God's children. Because she got that revelation. She got God's attitude to it. All children come from God. Uh, the word of God is the logos of God. The meaning and purpose of God. So, when God acts and sp when he speaks... He performs an action, and that action, that word comes to us. Uh, we lost purpose and meaning in the garden, but when God sends his words to us, we, 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 we regroup and we get back meaning and purpose and we go back to our divine nature. Come again. I'm basically saying that the word of God is the logos of God. God spoke. Is in action. We, God, when he spoke and made us in his image and likeness, we were as gods on the earth. We lost that meaning and purpose at the, in the garden. But when God revealed himself through his son, his, his logos, the meaning and purpose came back to us and we came back to our original nature, which was God. Yeah, that is basically what happened at salvation when we were receiving Christ. But, you know, you could receive Christ into your life and still not change. 
You know, many people are like that. You could receive Christ, be a good Christian. You love, every, you know, you love like averagely love. You do good Christian, you're not sinning, you don't do it. That's basically how everybody is. So they are saved, they have Christ in them, they have God in them. But you see, it is a different thing to walk in the nature of God himself. It is a different thing to carry the nature of God and manifest God. So that is the aspect that I'm right now talking about, which is a bit deeper than just having the logos come to you. Some people call it Rema, but then, but then Rema is the revelation stage. But I'm talking about something that is higher and deeper than Rema. Rema is when the word, the logos, comes alive and becomes like a revelation to you. But what about it not just becoming a revelation to you? What about it taking up or taking over your nature and transforming your nature to his nature? That is the thing we're talking about. When you become a revelation of that world, when you become a walking world, huh? a manifestation of God. So when I say things like, you want to see God, see me. That's what I'm talking about. It's not talk. It's not by faith. It's not profession. This is true. This is nature. And when you really spend time with me a little bit, you see, there is no person in the world that I meet and I want to bring them to Christ that they don't get saved. There's, there has not been a, an instant when I want to get somebody saved that it doesn't get saved. If I meet the person and spend time with him, that's the end. Because they encounter God, there is no way they will not be changed. You see what we are saying now? The last person now. Um... Just quickly, um, yesterday I was coming, I, I flew in from Texas, and um, I had to go through, I had to go board a plane to get here. And then Pastor Sunday has talked about very often about, he that cometh from above is above all. Well, this is the way I received the revelation. A revelation is like a plane at the airport. A lot of us Christians, we come to the church, we come to the airport. We look at a beautiful plane, big, huge. It can take you anywhere in the world. Uh, looking at it, to me, it looks like a revelation. When you are exposed to the word, you have a revelation of it. You go to the airport, you have a revelation of a nice plane. But you have to go through the next step. You have to check in your humanity at the security. You have to um, take your shoes off, get your belt off. The process. The process. You have to go through a, a, a screening, so to speak. Your mind goes through a screening. Very good. Very the Holy good. Spirit starts to unbuckle things out of you. And then you go in the plane, and the hostess says, buckle down. The Holy Spirit buckles you in, humbles you. You're checking your humanity completely. You are the total mercy of the plane, of the word of God. You have to go Very good. in Brilliant. the word. Brilliant. <laughs> you go in the word and you sit down for as long as it takes to get there. At the mercy of the word. At, you're completely surrendered now, the word of God, when people start to look at you from the outside, they no longer see you. All they see is the word. God, is the plane. And then you take off. He that cometh from above is above yeah. all. So, now you have another understanding of that statement. So, it's not just quoting scriptures now. Because you really begin to come from above when the nature of that heavenly abode Amen. is carried in you. <laughs> <laughs> so then you are truly, in fact, 
coming from above. And then fin- you, are, you are totally, genuinely above all. And finally, when you are up there, you become a God yes. to whatever the situation is on the floor, on the, on the and ground. And that's what Jesus was saying. Yes. When you are above there, you become like a God. To the situation on the on the That is under, underneath. Exactly. Thank you. Is that not brilliant? <laughs> that is a wonderful illustration. Thank you for that. That really helped us. Now, let's go back to Genesis 1. So why are we here? We are still <laughs> just explaining the first topic. Why are we here? So let's go back to Genesis 1.27 again. Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse, is that verse 27? Yes, Genesis okay, 1.27. Let's read verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay, there are two words here that I would like you to underline. God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So there are two words. Now, image and likeness. What we have been examining so far, how many of you know, how many of you will be able to clarify what we have been talking about since yesterday, expression, extension, and all that. Is that image or likeness of God? What we are talking about now, the nature of God. Is, what is that? Is that image or likeness? How many of you know? Is that what? Image. It has to be image. Likeness. No, is it likeness or image? Likeness. Likeness. Okay. Image. <laughs> okay. Then you prove it. Why is it likeness? When you talk, when you talk about kindness or love, if I exercise it to somebody, that's... Um, like-minded. Okay, thank you. It's but uh, yes. I will say image because it's stronger. When something is your image, it's like yourself. What we are talking about is to be more like Christ. Likeness can be to copy, to like copy something, which means I'm not trying to be exactly I'm to like look that. Look for the lady of yesterday that was talking about Christ likeness. She's not here yeah. now. We are trying to to like maybe I, I like I try to be like her, but I'm not her. Okay. But if I say an image, that means exactly like that person, okay. a reflection of that person. Okay. Uh, she he mentioned. Uh, I said image, but I have a different way of saying that. I think the image reflects as a in a mirror. It's sort of like that, but the likeness is you, you do the same things. You, if, God, if God creates, you create. If uh, Whatever God can do. If he, he remembers, you remember. If he uh, knows the difference between good and evil, you know the difference. I see likeness more in a, in a different the image. To me, represents um, who he is. You are, you are very close. Image, really, what we have been as, as, as expressing so far is image. Because that is the expression of God. That is the reflection of God. Image is like mirror. So who he is, that is who I'm trying to reflect. But likeness is to be able to do what he is doing, function. So image reflects to essence. Essence, personality. And likeness refers to function, answers to functions. So pay attention to that. So when God says, let us make man in our own image and likeness, there are two different things. People often think they are the same thing. No. Image is saying, for me to be in God's image is to carry his characteristics, is to make sure his nature becomes my nature, everything we've been talking about so far. But likeness means if he is Lord over the universe, for me to be Lord over the earth as he is Lord over the universe. 
he, if he is ruling the earth, for me to rule also over my own sphere of life like he is ruling over his own sphere of life. Are you getting that? So image is expression of his personality, of his person. Likeness is to be able to do what he do, function like him. Are you getting that? She wants to say something. When you use the word um, likeness, it's like if we can relate Jesus and the Holy Spirit, then when Jesus left, the Holy Spirit still working in us will be doing exactly the same thing. Another one just like me will be in you doing the same thing that I have done. Can we look at it that way? Come again. Um, I, I'm talking about likeness. To be able to do exactly the same thing that God did. So I'm understanding from the point of view of the Father when Jesus was leaving, he said, I'm going to leave you with a comforter. Another one just like me. We will do exactly the same thing that I did while I was here. You know. Uh. Can we relate the same function of the Holy Spirit and Jesus? Really, if you're talking about the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. it has the two. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit that works in me, changes me to have the image of God. The Holy Spirit that works through me, mm -hmm. works in me to do the same thing like he did. So you could actually... Have up, both. Yeah, have both in the Holy Spirit. So we're going to have another ex explanation of that. So I, whoever wants to tell me the difference between the image of God and likeness of God. Um, the way I can try to explain this is that, let's say, a physical son and a physical father. A person who has a character, like you can be walking in a particular way, and somebody can look at you and say, you are the image of your father. Because they see you carry the embodiment of what it means to be that person. But they can say, you cannot begin to do something that looks similar to you. They say, oh, you're doing something like your father. That means you are acting in ways that somebody else would have done it. You don't necessarily have to look like it, but you are acting in that particular same manner. But for somebody who has an image, there's no comparison there. You just look at that person and you can say, you are this person. Because you have the total characteristics. is the same eye, is the same nose, is the same face. Everything about this person is what you are. And that is the image. But when it's a likeness, you don't have to look like the person, but you are acting in exactly... Somebody can say, I see you doing exactly the same way somebody else used to do it. You are doing in likewise Function. manner. Function. Yeah. Okay, I think you, are very, you have helped us. So, with what you have said, image looks like that person. So, you reflect the person. Likeness can do... It doesn't necessarily look like the person, but can function like the person. Now, that brings us to a very serious, critical question. Now, this question to all of you. That scripture that we read, that let us make man in our image and likeness, who does he refer to today? Does he refer today to born-again Christians or to everybody, to all human beings? Huh? Who thinks it refers only to born-again people? Okay. Who thinks it refers to everybody? Okay, okay. The majority carries the vote. So we think definitely it's referring to everybody. So it doesn't matter if you are born again or you are not born again, you have image of God in you. And you have likeness of God in you. But people who are not born again cannot adequately reflect the image of God. But more so, unlike the image, but, like other, but in, in the likeness of God, everybody, especially the unbelievers and the believers, they can equally, even unbelievers can reflect or can actually act in God's likeness, sometimes better than the people who have the image of God. I don't know if you get that. So what she said in that definition, it helps us a lot in the sense that you, could, you might not carry the image of God, but walk in his likeness. So that's why, have you ever thought of why is it that 
not, it's not always believers who invent, who come up with the latest inventions. And how many of you agree, even the unbelievers, they agree to the fact that all those inventions and the ideas, they come, they have divine inspiration to them. Is that? They, they always say it, it's a revelation, it's an idea that comes, an idea comes from heaven. So how is, have you ever thought about that? That unbelievers can achieve success, unbelievers can do great things, unbelievers can invent plane, computer, Things, things that God gives, but they are still not saved. You never thought of that. It's because everybody still carry the likeness and the image of God. But although they might not reflect His image because they don't live with His Spirit, they don't walk with on His according to His Word. His Word is not changing them to God's image. They are not walking in the obedience to God's by God, to God's Spirit. But the likeness of God, what God does, which, which is in, the, it is in the, the likeness of God is, okay, read that verse 26 again. And God said, let us make man in our image and our like, after our likeness and let them have dominion over the now, fish. The aspect of dominion what does it refer to? What, 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 what does it relate to? The dominion over fish and all that. Does it ref- relate to or does it yeah, relate to the image or to the likeness? likeness. Now you are getting it. You clap for yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you are good students. Of course, that is referring to the likeness of God. So unbelievers can actually have dominion. Because they have the likeness of God, no, but not necessarily carrying the image of God. So they will go to hell if they die, but then they could still achieve, they can still manage the earth for God. They could still dominate the earth because they have been given that ability to dominate, to rule, to have dominion. Read it. To have dominion. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that see, creepeth upon the earth. You can rule and manage adequately well with the wisdom of God in you, the likeness of God in you, but that doesn't mean that you carry the image of God. Are you, is, are, is, it complicated? is it becoming complicated? You understand it? They want us to go for a break now, so after break we come back to it. I, yeah, I got a, Bless you. Huh? I got a question. You had a question? Okay. 10 minutes break.